Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss further into the applied project, uh, which is faster going up or coming down video series. And now look at question four. Uh, based on my earlier videos, I went over uh, the, uh, this applied project and did questions one, uh, two, and three. So make sure to watch those. And I'm not going to recap too much on the previous videos. But basically, the whole idea of this applied project is to answer this question, which states. Do you think it takes longer to uh, it takes longer to reach its maximum height when you throw a ball in the air, or for it to fall back to earth from its maximum height? And in this question four video, we're gonna basically answer that for uh, one particular example. So let's scroll here. Yeah, and first off, just to recap questions one and uh, yeah, questions one to three. Question one involved uh, basically showing the governing differential equation of, of the motion of the ball as you throw it directly in the air. And then we derived the velocity equation as a function of time. Question two goes over the height of the ball equation as a function of time, so y of t. And then question three. Yeah, question three involved finding the time that it takes for the ball to reach its maximum height. So finding this equation, and then uh, also for a particular example of where the ball is one kilogram, initial loss of 20 meters per second, and air resistance is one tenth of the speed. Uh, I showed in my last video that if you have this particular ball in these in these uh, in this scenario, the time it takes to reach the Maximum height is 10 times ln 11.8 divided by 9.8. That's the exact. And then it roughly equals to, and you calculate it, 1.86 seconds. And now let's look at question four. So question four states, let t2 be the time at which the ball uh, falls back to earth. So from its maximum height to the ground. And then uh, it says here, for the particular ball in question three, so using these uh, this one kilogram ball, Estimate T2 by using a graph of the height function y of t. And the reason we're going to be estimating using a graph, I'll explain in my next video, question 5, is that it's impossible to solve explicitly for, yeah, for the T2. I'll discuss that in a later video uh, because it's just a bit more uh, complex. And then this is stating, uh, then the question is finally, which is faster going up or coming down? So this one answers it for this particular question. In the next video, I'll go over for the general case uh, of uh, whether it goes up or down faster. So to uh, do this, basically it says uh, estimate by graphing this function y of t. Uh, before we get to that, let's just recall that function. That is just uh, right over here. But first, I'll get the the figures here. So that this is the function from question two: y of t is v o plus m g over p times m p times m yeah, times m divided by p and then times one e to the negative p t divided by m all minus m g t over p. So it is a pretty complicated equation because that there's an e. I mean, there's a t in in the power of this exponential exponential function e, and also you're subtracting by t here. It becomes very hard and in this case actually it's impossible to solve directly for t when we uh, when we when we go ahead and look for t2 where the height is zero I'll get to that in a bit but basically recall that well the mass of the ball is one kilogram that's from question three and the initial velocity vo is 20 meters per second air resistance is one tenth so we have whoops so we have VO is equal to 20 meters per second. And also I'm going to do is assume G is 9.8 meters per second, as I did in my uh, question three video as well. And then the air resistance is one tenth the velocity. And in other words, it's one over 10. And the units are kilogram per second. And uh, you can see more about this in detail in question three as I got the units for this. So that's just kilogram per second. And it works all out. So what we're going to do is, is plug these all into the y of t function. So y of t is equal to, again, vo. So we'll have 20 plus, this is mg over p. So we'll have 20 plus m times 9.8 is just g divided by p, which is 110. 
and then this is times it by, uh, if I remember, 1 over, this is m over p, so 1 kilogram over 110, and then times it by, let's see what this was again, so that it's our m over p, 1 minus e to the negative pt, divided by m in this mgt over p. So we have 1 minus e to the pt, so p is negative, um, P is 1 over 10 times T divided by M, which is 1 kilogram. Whoops. I'll put the T back to it. And then minus MGT over P. So M is 1 kilogram times 9.8 times by T. So that's G is uh, gravity times by T divided by uh, P, which is 1 over 10. And uh, yeah, the units actually all work out fine because this is uh, kilograms over yeah, this is kilogram over seconds, and this the the mass is kilograms. So the kilograms cancel, and this uh, 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. The seconds goes on top. You have time. For example, I'll just write that down. So you have a kg times by meters per second squared times by seconds, which is time. The gravity kilogram per second. So basically this goes on top, it's the same thing as writing like that. This cancels, this cancels, this cancels, and we're left with meters. And uh, likewise, everywhere else is all similar. So what we end up getting is, is when we simplify this, this equals 2. So 20, and then uh, this is going to be a 20 plus 9.8 times 1 is 9.8, flip the 10 above which is plus 98. Yeah, I'll write this a bit neater, so plus 98, and now this is 1 divided by 1 over 10, that's just 10, flip this above, times it by, and this one here is just 1 minus e to the negative 1 over 10 times t, the 1 this just does nothing there, or we'll just write this as uh, point 0.1, so negative point 0.1t, and then minus all minus here, which is 9.8 times t. This 10 goes on top, so 98t. So finally, to simplify this all, we get y of t is equal to 20 plus 9.8 is, well, uh, 118 times by 10. So we have this 1180. So let's uh, put a zero out there times it by 1 minus e negative 0.1t and then minus 98t and there is our y of t function for this particular example. Yeah, so here I've graphed out this function and uh, with the just Google uh, search calculator right here as you see it goes like this, uh, it goes all the way back down so you have it at the time t is 0, you have the height is 0, you throw it as a maximum height here and it comes back down and it looks like a bit skewing that it's a bit more flat on the right side so it might actually look like it takes longer to come back down to the floor in fact well, let's just try to find that out. So, uh, first of all, recall from question three that the time it takes to reach the maximum height is 1.86 seconds. Let's see if that is right. This is at, so 1.86 is 1.5, 6, 7, 8, and then 1.86 is right here, which is, which is a correspondingly correct to the maximum height. <clears throat> so first I'll draw this up, and this is uh, y, this is the time t. So we have from here to here is from our earlier video t1, which is uh, 1.86, roughly 1.86 seconds. So what you want to find out is t2, which is from there all the way to here. So T2 is what we want to find out. But as you can see from here, um, th at this value right here, this is about uh, height is almost zero. And we get about 3.83. So we'll just round up to 3.84, assuming this goes to zero. So this is about T is equal to 3.84 seconds, or roughly. 
like that. So that's about, that's the full length from here to here. And that is, I'll just draw this out. So that's what T is all the way from there to there is T. And that's from when you throw it all the way to lands again. So to solve for T2, which is the time it takes from the maximum height to the ground, that equals to, well, 3.84 subtracted by T1. I'll again write this roughly equal to 3.84 minus 1.86. And then this one, let's just uh, put in a Let's just calculate this out by hand. You could use a calculator. I'll just subtract it by hand. And you could learn more about uh, subtracting by hand in my earlier video in a video link below. So this is uh, put a 14 like that because it's uh, 4 is less than 6. So this becomes 7. 7 less than 8. So that becomes 17 minus 1 there. So we've got 14 minus 6 is 8. 17 minus uh, 8 right here. Here that is you know, that is equal to nine. Yeah, that's just nine, and then right here two minus one is just one. Decimal place goes there. Put this in a bubble. So this is equal to one point nine eight seconds, and that is or I'll just again put this approximately equal to. So T two is approximately equal to. 1.86 and 1.98 seconds, which is in fact greater than 1.86 seconds. So, so we can write well. T2 is about. It's about. Uh, let me subtract this. Is about 1.98 minus. Put this like this. 1.98 minus 1.86 seconds and you subtract this that's well the difference of tw uh, 12 or 0.12 so this is about 0.12 seconds longer so for this particular ball uh, uh, in this example it takes longer for it to um, to reach back down to the ground after it goes from the maximum height thus answering the question which was we want to ask which is faster going up or coming down so we'll write thus you know, going up is faster as well. Going down is slower. It's faster, which is uh, which is different from what I initially guessed in my very first video on this pilot project. I thought it was going to be the exact same. And in the next video, we're going to go over for a general case. So this is, in fact, going faster, which is uh, quite surprising. I thought it was going to be the exact same. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. So and in the next video, question five, I'll go over the general case uh, for um, why it's always faster as well to show that it's always faster going up than coming down. And again, I want to uh, go uh, recap on my initial guess. So before I started this applied project, it says uh, before getting started, think about the situation, make a guess based on your physical intuition. So I guess that here's the time to and from H max should be the same or height maximum height. So I thought it was going to be the same. In fact, I got this well wrong. It turns out that throwing it uh, that initially goes it's faster throwing going up is faster than coming back down, which is quite fascinating. Anyways, that is all for today. Uh, hopefully, you'll learn from this pretty interesting video on on uh, just the motion of a ball and some uh, yeah some just interesting physics. So it was different than, than what I uh, initially predicted anyways. Anyways, this is all for today. If you learn, like always, uh, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.